Hey everybody, welcome to the Sports Card Show. This is the first video that I'm doing on my channel and um, it'll be a little bit of a trial run, but I figured that it would be best just to get something up and uh, get the ball rolling on this channel. So um, I want to tell you guys a little bit about uh, myself and what um, I do with sports cards and um, kind of my background and um, also tell you a little bit about what I want to try to focus on on this channel. Um, I have another sports card channel, which is a, an ASMR channel, and probably most of the people who are watching this are people who've come over from that channel, um, since it's got a pretty good following, and I'll, I'll link it up, but, um, but this is more of a, a general, um, kind of interest, um, educational and sort of inform, informational, um, uh, video channel that I'd like to use to cover, um, information about you know how to do certain things in in collecting sports cards where to buy cards how to get good deals um you know thoughts about investing in cards um, which is a very hot topic these days um and uh you know to do a lot of the kind of content that lots of other people are doing and i won't necessarily do any better but things like box breaks um we may have contests we may have um uh special you know episodes when there's new products out um but in any event We'll, we'll get there in, in due course, and um, what I want to talk about today, um, and what's the sort of subject of the video here, is is, is where to buy sports cards, because um, a lot of folks who are um, relatively new to sports card collecting, maybe they've been um, uh, out of the sports card game for a while, uh, as I was until about 2017, I... Um, tell you a little bit about myself i i was a collector um of sports cards back in the you know, late 80s and uh, early 90s as a as a as a teenager um and um you know really enjoyed it but like a lot of kids sort of gave it up when i went off to high school and then college and um didn't really get back into it until 2017 when um i i was a big yankees fan and and aaron judge was kind of blown up and i happened to notice that um, the card, the, the sets that you get him in, um, namely 2017, uh, Bowman, if I recall correctly at that time was the hot product. Um, his Bowman rookies were, I, I, they were like $8 and you could get $8 consistently on eBay for his cards for a period of time when he was, you know, going nuts, hitting 50 plus home runs, um, in his rookie year. Um, so that kind of caught my attention and uh, got me excited about um, collecting again. And so I, I started to buy lots of 2017 Bowman and, and um, other sets from around that year and just sort of got more and more into it. And, you know, if you're collecting now, you probably have a sense that the sports card industry is um, as as popular and as as just sort of energetic as it ever has been, even back in the 80s when there was just a ton of money and a ton of uh, excitement, a ton of people that were buying cards. Um, so it's it's kind of fun to see. It's a little bit scary and frustrating um, sometimes if you're <laughs> trying to buy stuff for, uh, for cheap, especially unopened things. So um, in any event, that, that was a little bit of background on, on me. Um, the point that I wanted to get to, though, is that if you're coming back into this, you probably have discovered that things are getting very um, expensive very quickly in the sports card market. And for example, I have a, um, I have a product here that uh, I just got um, a few days ago. This is um, Mosaic Basketball, and this is the Hobby Box configuration. Um, it's been out in retail form for uh, at least a month or so, and the Hobby stuff has just come out. And so these, um, have kind of a strange uh, sort of story, I guess, uh, in terms of pricing and, and how they've gotten in the market. Um, they've been distributed to hobby retailers um, like you would normally expect new products to do. Um, so you can, you know, you, you could buy them, or at least you could buy them uh, not too long ago on pre-order from David Adams Card World and... Um, Blow Cards, which are two retailers that I'll talk a lot about, um, and uh, um, get your boxes that way. But their pre-orders were very limited. They were only up for like a little while, and plus the price on them was 
relatively high. It was, I think, um, like just around 600 at uh, David Adams, and it was uh, a little bit more like 630 or 640 at at, at Blowout. And then um, funny thing is Panini um, sells cards, uh, boxes of cards directly on their website, uh, which they call Panini Direct, and um, usually you expect if you can get cards from one of those sales um, you will get a decent price because it's coming direct direct from the factory and panini has has been relatively good at um, you know making prices reasonable but it's just been hard to get anything purchased from that site because there's lots of people and lots of what uh, folks call bots who are uh, or that are you know programs intended to um, snap up all the cards that are for sale very quickly and so they'll sell out and if you're just a mere human um, you may not get any uh, so uh, in any event the the pricing on the Panini Direct offering for uh, Mosaic was ridiculously high it was like $629 I think for a box of this uh, Mosaic basketball and um, that's like you know just what the aftermarket was already charging for this stuff and and by the way i think that the uh like if you're if if you're a david adams you were probably paying you know something like 150 dollars um from panini directly to get those boxes so it would seem that panini now has started um really jacking up the prices on their panini direct offerings and that is uh a fairly new thing and it's you know kind of frustrating for people who are trying to get stuff so in any event I'll talk a little bit about that but um, I, I thought I maybe should quickly explain why I have this box here this is a box of 2019-20 impactable basketball and um, I, I thought I would just do it as kind of the first box break on this on this channel um, so I'll talk a little bit about more about this when I um, am gonna open it um, but getting back to the topic of where to buy cards. Um, I wanted to show you guys a couple of things and I'm going to switch on over to the um, screen here where you can uh, see my web browser. And this is something that uh, I've just newly figured out how to do using a, a program um, for recording these videos. But uh, in any event, um, so I want to talk about this site because I feel like a, a lot of people are not quite yet using it. And um, I think it's a really good one to know about. So it's myslabs.com. And uh, what this site is, is just, you know, it's a marketplace where you can list cards. It's r relatively, well, I wouldn't say hard, but it's just a, a little bit more unusual to sign up to sell cards here than like eBay, um, where if you have an email, basically you can sign up. This has a bit of an approval process. And, you know, there's, I think, one guy running it. Um, so it might take a little time and finesse to get an account to sell here but um, um, that's, if you're, that's if you're selling if you're buying it's a relatively smooth um, process all the prices that you see are um, shipped because they just didn't I guess want to deal with the hassle of um, you know having differing shipping prices and um, you know all the things that come with um, shopping carts and things like that so you see a card you you know you you buy it and um, using the buy now and and then um, what happens is you have to make the payment uh, through PayPal it's all all the payments are done through PayPal um, and then the person who um, is selling that card has to ship it to you I think within two days or I mean they have to it doesn't have to get to you in two days but they have to ship it off to you in, in like two to three days or something like that um, so uh, you know it's, it's relatively easy so I have bought a couple cards off of here um, the other thing I want to show you on this one is is they have uh, a wax. So um, so right here is a box of 2020 Bowman. The stuff just came out. It's you know another example of kind of prices going insane. Uh, last year, 2018 Bowman, when that first came out, a hobby box, which is what this is, I think cost about $110 or something like that. And by the way, Bowman hobby boxes used to cost <laughs> like $50, $60. So uh things were crazy last year and they're twice as three times as crazy this year because this is 320 dollars. that's actually not a terrible price um you know i've heard a lot of hobby shops are selling this for 350 bucks um which is just nuts but 
you know, if you can save a few bucks off it, great. The other thing that is great about this site is if you're buying stuff, you won't get charged sales tax um, unless one of the sellers happens to be in the same state as you. And if you live in a small state, I live in North Dakota. So um, there's pretty much no, <laughs> no sellers on here, I think, that are in North Dakota. Um, so I, I'm not going to, well, I also am a, 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 I have a reseller, um, certificate. So if I'm buying things and shipping them into my state for the purpose of reselling them, I wouldn't pay sales tax anyway. But if you're just a collector and you're buying stuff off eBay, you will pay sales tax because eBay collects and enforces sales tax payments, um, on behalf of everybody who sells on there. But my slabs, uh, does not know whether that may change in the future. If they run to need issues with taxing authorities in some States, who knows, but for now, um, if, if you're not in the same state as the person you're buying from, um, and I actually don't think there's a way to tell that. So that's a little bit um, unfortunate, but someday they might add that. And as you can tell, it's very bare bones. This site is just, um, you know, like the absolute <laughs> minimum, I think. Uh, oh, and here's uh, one of those mosaic hobby boxes. So $745 is what these are up to. Um, I've seen them selling for like 800 bucks. Um, or more, but that was kind of like right a, a after release when people didn't know um, what they would be sort of settling in at on the pricing. So and here's somebody selling the same thing for a thousand dollars. So yeah, markets all over the place, but there's some good deals to be had here. You're not going to pay sales tax here. Shipping is free on everything um, that you see listed. So um, this can be a real good resource. Um, and then, you know, Dave and Adams card world. I, I just want to say a couple things about Dave and Adams and blowout, which are the two largest, um, resellers of cards online, which is that oftentimes if I'm buying if I'm wanting to buy something, a case or a box of cards, I will check at Dave and Adams, uh, for the pricing and I will check at blowout. And, um, usually there's, uh, there's a little bit of difference at least between the two and, you know, some, Things may be cheaper at Dave and Anna, some may, may be cheaper at Blowout, but sometimes um, the, the prices are actually very different. <laughs> um, you know, I've bought cases that are, uh, you know, $1,500 cases, and they're 200 bucks cheaper at Dave and Adams than Blowout, and sometimes vice versa, actually. I, I, I actually remember I bought something um, probably a month or two ago, and um, and the prices were uh, cheaper at Blowout. So, um, so shop around. Um, you know, the other, uh, big retailers, uh, I think would probably generally be around the same pricing as David Adams and blowout. There's steel city. Um, you know what? There used to be something called charm city cards. I don't know if they exist anymore, but they were, they were big, um, not too long ago. Um, and there's lots of kind of smaller regional resellers that may have prices that are even lower, but with these big guys, they, you know, they know how to ship quickly. Um, they're known factor. They're not going to disappear with your money. Um, and so they're, they're a nice, um, I think resource for, for buying most of the things you want to buy, but, but, but do shop around, um, uh, because there often are differences, uh, that are significant when you're looking at, at blow up versus David Adams. Um, so, um, and then the other thing I, I, I want to talk about is some of these products that are, um, I'm just going to put this uh, box back up and we're going to go look at that again. Um, I don't have any like great eye candy, unfortunately, um, to, to look at for this video, but um, I did want to talk a little bit about um, the, the sort of retail um, products that you can find in Walmart and Target because um, there are a lot of things like this mosaic that came out in retail form initially. It was only in retail. Um, there were blaster boxes, hanger boxes, I think, um, hanger cello packs, and, um, you could only find those in, in retail and, I th and they were at target and at, um, at, at Walmart. Um, there wasn't any product configuration that was exclusive to either one of those, but, um, it, it's been very hard to find that stuff. And, um, I think that people, um, are rightfully very frustrated, um, if they're going to stores, you know once or twice a week to look for that stuff and it's never there. So I want to talk a little bit about my experience um, buying things because um, I, I have had some luck getting things um, that are uh, retail exclusives. And um, more recently, I've just sort of given up because um, I think as um, the sports card market has gotten busier and 
more expensive and there's more money to be made in buying some of these things at retail than selling them on eBay for a profit. Um, I feel like it's just gotten harder and harder, but I did have a few tips um, that I wanted to share. Um, so if you, um, if you want to talk about Target in particular, which is, uh, I'm assuming most of the people are watching the show in the U.S. and they have Target in their cities or nearby. Um, so Target is um, a store that has a, an exclusive um, agreement with a company called Excel Marketing. And um, what that means is there is this company, um, Excel, that um, has their own staff of people across the country who drive from store to store and then put out the cards on the displays at Target. Um, and those cards are actually sent to Target directly. So what happens is these people show up at Target, they, um, they go, you know, into the store and then they find the cards in this, in this, you know, back in the storeroom. Sometimes they're actually sitting out, um, and you might see Excel marketing boxes. They might be sitting out right by the card display on the day that, uh, the, the person from Excel is supposed to come and put them out. So this Excel marketing company controls, you know, um, pretty much everything about what you see at, at Target. Um, and in fact, they're the ones who do anything that's Target exclusive. That's typically um, going to be Excel marketing that works with the uh, manufacturers to create those products. So things like the um, the Bowman Mega Box baseball products, which are a, a kind of a blaster box sort of product that um, shows up in um, Targets every year since I think 2017. Yeah, that was the first year they did those. So, um, so Excel marketing is responsible though some people think it's that the manufacturers are making those for target but excel um i once was talking to an excel rep who was at the target that i was shopping at and they said uh those products are not target exclusive they're excel marketing exclusive and they took offense to the idea that it was a target exclusive <laughs> so they're kind of touchy about it i guess um but in any event um, excel marketing is this company that puts that stuff out so the moral of the story here is Typically, there's going to be one person at Excel or who works for Excel. I mean, they're all like these people that, that just are all across the country. Um, they are going to be the one person that stocks, you know, any particular store. So they will usually have a schedule. And uh, back when I was kind of still trying to get stuff in Target, I figured out that the Excel rep at my store showed up on like, it was like Friday mornings, I think, about nine o'clock. And I knew that because... Um, it was just dumb luck. I mean, I showed up one day and I think it was like 10 o'clock and I went there and there was, um, some stuff there that, you know, I knew wouldn't last more than a few hours, um, sitting on the shelf. So I said, oh, okay, it must be target. Uh, the, the, it must be the target stocks this stuff at 9am. So I went back like that, like the next week at, I think 930 or something like that. And, um, actually, you know what happened <laughs> the first time? I went looking for this um, item that I was looking for. It was actually 20, um, what was it? 2019 uh, Bowman Mega Boxes I was looking for, and I, I went there at like 10 or something. And uh, th what I saw at the card at the display of cards was um, the Excel rep. This there was a woman there, um, and she was clearly the rep, um, and she was talking to a guy. <laughs> who I'd seen at card shows around my town and he had a shopping cart full of these boxes, probably had a hundred some boxes in there. He had cleaned out the display. So that's where I sort of said, Oh, what's like, Oh, you're the rep. Um, this woman that was there, you know, like, Oh, so you come around this time and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, this gentleman, I come, you know, change a little bit, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess next I'll come next week and, and hopefully I'll beat this guy. And, uh, sure enough, I did. Um, I went there at like 9.30 and he hadn't been there yet and um, the cards were already out. So I got to buy a bunch of those um, just by, you know, sort of lucking into it. But you could figure out um, when cards are generally stocked in your Target or even in Walmart. Walmart does their stuff in-house, so they have people, just, you know, employees um, at their store who, who do their stocking. Um, so there's not an Excel rep that visits. Um but generally, from what I have heard, um, they 
just try to stock their products, you know, roughly the same time each week. Um, so it's going to be Thursday afternoons or, you know, Wednesday afternoons or Friday mornings or whatever. So you can try to figure that out, but, um, it, you know, it may or may not work because you may have a, a rep that sort of isn't very timely and they, maybe they show up three hours late and then it's by then it's, it's too late. So, you know, the whole timing, trying to get to stores. Oh, and by the, you know, the thing is I hear about is, um, people who are really adamant at getting these retail products will like, you know, find someone who lives right next to this, to the Walmart or the target or whatever. And they'll show up there like every hour, you know, for an entire week. <laughs> Or maybe they have a sense of, I'm sure they have a sense of when the rep is going to stock. And so they'll have someone just show up every hour or maybe sit there like for the entire morning or afternoon when they're going to come. And they'll just know immediately when stuff is there. And, you know, you can try to do that, but um, I, I, I don't think most people are going to have an interest in that. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you folks who want this retail stuff. There's no secret ingredient for getting that. But, um, you know, you can give yourself a better chance. I will say that if you live in a, t if you live in sort of a rural area and you don't, um, go to a store, that's like a super busy store, you have a fairly good chance, particularly if you're just lucky in that, um, not a lot of other collectors have, um, you know, ascended upon that store as their source for sports cards. Um, so I live, I, as I said, I lived in, I live in North Dakota. Um, I drive occasionally through like Minnesota, like rural Minnesota, um, to get to the twin cities. Uh, and, um, there are a number of Walmarts just like right on the highway that are in, you know, relatively small towns. Now, lots of people come in from the rural areas to get there. So they're pretty big stores, but, um, like there's one I know for sure that is just not, um, as visited as lots of other stores, you know, in, in the area. So I, I generally stop at that one if I'm making a road trip and um, see what they got. And I've gotten a few things like back when prison basketball was going bonkers, um, earlier, or, well, last year, um, in 2019, um, I stopped at that store and there was like, I think a couple of mega boxes that were there. Um, and there was like nothing really around anywhere, uh, in, larger cities that I'd been to. So just some thoughts on, um, kind of getting retail. The other thing I would say is, as an idea for how to get retail is a lot of times, uh, Walmart, um, and sometimes target, but more so Walmart will have uh, pre-sales of retail products on their website. So if you know, something's coming out like right now, tops series two baseball is, um, well, it was supposed to be coming out in June, I believe, but, um, it will probably be delayed because there's no baseball being played. I don't know. There's going to be a lot to put into that set if they decide to come out with it. Um, but in any event, um, that product is just sort of starting to get pre-ordered some places, at least the retail stuff. And, um, I've seen people posting on like discussion forums that I visit and, um, blow out, um, discussion forums. I want to quickly show you guys. Um, this is the blowout discussions forum, discussion forums. It's blowoutforums.com. Uh, and this is actually a really cool resource, um, for finding out stuff, um, including like when, um, products go on presale, uh, in, in Walmart or other retail, uh, locations. Um, now you still might be too late in seeing something unless you check this like all the time. Um, but, uh, I'm just kind of going through this. Um, and, uh, seeing um so this is a, a good site to just for lots of information but um including you know getting heads up on um when stuff is available for uh, uh pre-order at walmart and i've gotten a few things that way um because i've seen them on here um i was also going to say that uh um they post on here when things are like for sale um on Panini's website and when there's going to be a, um, a new offering there, whether it's a first off the line or just a, um, a, a release of a hobby product on Panini. So, um, and there's lots, you know, there's ways you can find that out too. You can just go to Walmart and start searching for stuff or you can just go to Panini and see what their release calendar looks like. Um, but those are a few ways that, you know, I would definitely look into if, um, I were trying to find things and hopefully not pay like the aftermarket pricing once they're, released. Um, and you know, there are certainly lots of other ways people like to buy stuff off eBay all the time, but 
unopened stuff is not so great to buy off eBay because you don't really know, you know, that somebody isn't like going through a case until they get a case hit and then selling the rest of the boxes, um, or doing other, you know, shenanigans. But there are, uh, eBay sellers that sell unopened stuff, um, that, uh, are, you know, they've been around a while, so they have a good, good uh, history and they, you know, people trust them. So, um, those are just a few thoughts on, on, on where to buy stuff. You know, people ask me all the time, where do I buy my stuff? And, you know, the answer often is um, one of the things I've talked about on this channel already. You know, it's either Dave and Adams. A lot of times I'll do pre-orders on, on Dave and Adams or on Blowout. Um, I like Dave and Adams for pre-orders a lot because they have a pretty minimal... Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm if you're hearing children screaming outside, I'm by a window in my house, and that's probably where that's uh, coming from. Um, so... Apologies if there's background noise. We'll get that figured out as I get this channel a little bit uh, more figured out. But, um, you know, so I do a lot of uh, pre-orders, um, like, for example, 2020 Bowman Baseball, which just came out. Um, I may do a pre-order, um, or I did do a pre-order of that and um, have, you know, some cases of that that are now coming to me. Um, and I'll do a probably a, a video just on 2020 Bowman, kind of, um, you know, just a bunch of information about that product. Um so I, I've, I've done a lot of pre-orders um, that way. I've done, you know, some retail hunting. I've done just looking at um, stuff that's, you know, in stock and for sale at online retailers and trying to strike when I think something's a good deal. Um, you know, I bought some 2018 Tops Update Baseball, which is a super hot product. Um, I bought that before it blew up because, um, you know, a lot of folks were saying that that was a really good thing to invest in. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I have a, a few different ways to um, buy cards, um, but uh, um, those are some of the more common ones that I use, and hopefully some of that's useful to you guys. So I just want to um, kind of try to wrap up here. Um, since I've been babbling a lot, I don't know if people are going to like that or not, but we'll find out <laughs> um, and open up this box. Um, so this is Impeccable Basketball, as I said, 2018-20. Um, this is a kind of a super high end product. This box cost me, I think a thousand and fifty dollars. I got it on sale, uh, from Dave and Adams. They were doing one, some sale maybe a couple months ago and I picked it up cause I thought, you know, Hey, why not? Um, see what it's like. I, I generally don't buy stuff like this. That's like a thousand dollars and you get, you know, just a handful of cards, but sometimes they're fun and you know, for box breaks online, they're kind of entertaining. So, um, this is gonna so this has nine cards in it five of them are autos there's one metal insert in here um i just realized i don't have a cutting implement so i'm gonna see if i can scratch my way in here <laughs> um uh and then there's three three base cards in here in addition to those autos and the metal insert um my prediction is that i will get my uh, butt handed to me on this um and for the thousand some dollars i paid for this I probably expect to get like a hundred dollars in value. Um, that's kind of the way that it goes um, with this stuff. Oh boy, I just realized I'm not showing this to you. So let's go um, back to this channel uh, or screen. Um, and I'm just gonna cut real quick in here. Um, so yeah, I, I, I predict that uh, things are gonna go sideways on this, um, but you know, I like to I like to open stuff and I open stuff on my other channel that ASMR channel I mentioned all the time that I know I'm gonna get rocked on most likely but I like to think it's a public service um, to folks to show you what not to do a lot of times this higher end stuff um, and by the way a lot of the stuff I'm talking about if you if you're a collector if you've been collecting for like the last five or ten years or maybe the last twenty or thirty years um, you know there's probably not a lot I could tell you that you don't know um, and I hope that maybe these box breaks or something else would, would, um, you know, kind of draw you to this channel. But, um, generally I think folks that are going to get the most out of this, um, this channel are, are, uh, people that are relatively new to collecting or newly back to collecting after taking a break like myself. Um, so that's the metal card I can feel cause it's very heavy. Um, and then there's just one thick pack, um, in here and all these cards are going to be thick. So it's a very thick pack. Um, I've thought a little bit about doing like breaks, kind of like they do uh, on the Jabs family, 
channel. If you don't know that one, that's a decent channel to... A lot of people I know have issues with, with the guy who does that channel for whatever reasons, but... Um, you know, he does a ton of stuff and I think he does exclusively baseball, but he does a lot of things where like, he'll open up a, you know, just a box of cards and like every pack in there will be going to, you know, someone who bought into that break. So strangely, they put a couple of spacers in here. Um, so, um, you know, maybe breaks that are kind of like that. I doubt I'm going to do like a five case break, um, <laughs> of anything. Cause I, I just don't really want to do that kind of sorting and mailing and blah, blah, blah. But um, you know, as, as we get more followers and people are interested in doing those things, I'll be happy to, uh, to consider that kind of stuff, but we'll see where things go. So I'll open this pack first. This is the, again, this is the metal insert. Um, it's very heavy. I've heard, I think that you can get like cards that are actually made of, um, silver, but this does not appear to be one of them. Okay. So this is, uh, James Harden. Oh boy. You really can't see it if I go like that. It's very um, sort of shiny. Um, so it's James Harden, James Harden, um, purple, and there's a nice film over there to, over the top of the card on the front and the back, um, which I appreciate because this these metal cards tend to get like really scratched up if um, if they don't have that some sort of protection on there, as you can see, because like the coating is all scratched up. So that's pretty cool. James Harden, obviously, pretty good star. Um, and uh, this is not numbered or anything. I don't know if that's a parallel or if they're just sort of, you know, some color like like purple or you know some other simple color in the base very base base version. But oh, jeez, we can really hear that. <laughs> All right. So next card. By the way, I'm uh, as I'm recording this, I, I realize that. Uh, there's a little bit of like echo in this room I'm in. It, you know, it's got like hard floors and um, none of my walls are covered with anything that would absorb sound. So I am going to try to put up some, uh, you know, some uh, sound absorption like panels or something. So that gets a little better. Again, I just wanted to kind of get a video up because I've been just sort of thinking about this channel, putting it on and doing it. There's another metal card in there, interestingly. Um, for a while, so I just want to get this up. All right, here we go. Lonzo Ball, numbered to 49, probably a blue parallel. Um, not the best, kind of a rookie that didn't uh, ultimately live up to the hype. Uh, Darren Fox is... Um, you know, really good young player. By the way, I don't know everything about um, every sport. I know the most about baseball, um, but I know the next most about basketball, and that's not like a ton. Um, I know almost nothing about like football, and I know nothing about hockey. So I'm going to open products from all sports, and uh, what we'll do is um, if I'm not familiar with somebody I get an auto from or something, you know, just go look it up on eBay, and I want to show you the process of, you know, how to find value and what kind of what what amounts cards would go for if you sold them because I think that's actually a very valuable um, skill to have and, and on like Facebook groups that I see for sports card collectors a lot a lot of people always ask like how much is this worth how much is that worth um, and you know there are answers to that questions out there so <laughs> so we'll we'll use my uh, ignorance about some sports um, to uh, you know learn. Uh, how you figure out whether you got good cards in a pack or not um, without going to a price guide, which nobody really uses these days because you'd have to have a subscription to Beckett and um, their pricing is just like crazy inaccurate. It's not, and I see we've got a, um, we've got a uh, redemption. So uh, anyways, Darren Fox, he's, a, he's actually a, a, a young player that I think is, um, has a lot of potential yet. And, um, um, I think he was having a pretty good year before the season ended, but this is not like a rookie or anything, so it's probably not got a ton of value. It's number 99. That's a purple. Number 99 blues, number 49. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, man, look at this. I, I might, I'm going to save this till the end, I think. Kurt Rambis. <laughs> How do you not love Kurt Rambis, folks? How do you not love him? Those glasses. He used to wear it with like the tape, like the athletic tape in the middle. And at the end there, um, 
So it's an on-card signature, number to 99. It's with the, his Lakers team. I feel like um, I haven't watched all of the... Oh, sorry, I keep hitting my mic there. Um, I haven't watched all of the, uh, you know, the Michael Jordan um, Last Dance documentary, but I feel like I remember seeing him in there uh, because he certainly would have played against Jordan when the Lakers, you know, were pretty dang good there in the 80s and uh, went up against Jordan's Bulls. Um, so... Kind of cool, you know. He, he was certainly not a star, but he was around for a while, and uh, I don't know that he has, like, a fan following, um, but I, I always kind of liked Kurt Rambis because he was so goofy looking with those glasses, and he always wore those, like, super short shorts, so I'm happy to get that one. Um, so that's probably, like, a $10 card. I don't know, something like that. Here's Dave Cowan's autograph number two. Um, oh, wow, we got another... Um, Oh, that's the same one. I was going to say we have another uh, Redemption, but we just had that one that I put on the back. So there's Dave Cowens. He's actually um, a really good uh, old player. Um, can't imagine he's not in the Hall of Fame. I think he's, um, uh, you know, a very uh, tried and true Hall of Famer. Um, and this, is again, is an odd card autograph, so um, pretty cool piece of history right there. Dave Collins, um, number to 49. And that's a green parallel, looks like. Unfortunately, it looks like the corner on it was kind of banged up, which is never something we want to see. So, you know, with a lot of these products that have a lot of autographs in them, it happens that you get cards that are really cool. I mean, the, uh, Dave Collins obviously is a really legendary player. Um, Kurt Ramos is a very sort of noteworthy, <laughs> uh, interesting player. Um, so these are like fun cards, but like there's not a ton of value, I don't think, in either of these cards. Um, so let's go Grant Williams. Uh, I'm trying to if I can turn this over without looking at it. Grant Williams. Okay, impeccable. Uh, number to 99. Yeah, not the best hit, um, but a nice looking auto. And boy, you can't you can't go wrong with these on cards. Um, so that is. Going to be number three of our address. Um, oh, well, there's a decent rookie autograph in uh, metal stainless stars. Um, wow, look at that autograph. Very minimalistic. So he's one of the, you know, I don't, certainly I think top ten, at least, um, you know, at the draft stage. Boy, this is getting super scratched. You can see. I don't know if you can see, but I can see. Scratches on there. This does not have that protective film, which is a bummer. So he's one of the, you know, better guys straight out of the draft. I don't know that he's done a whole lot since he's been in the in the league. Um, but, you know, not, not terrible if you can't get one of the top rookies out of a 2019 product. So I'll take his autograph any day of the week. But again, you know... Just not a ton of value there, and uh, if you're paying a thousand dollars, you're going to get rocked. And there's Clay Thompson, just a base card, number seventy-five. So that's not obviously going to do a whole lot for value. <laughs> uh, so I do see every card is numbered. I just realized that, except these metal cards are not numbered, um, but uh, all the paper cards are, are numbered. So here's our last hope at um, any semblance of returning the value of this box, which I do not think we will do. But um, hopefully it's a good one. Uh, right. Oh, boy. It's not a good one. Romeo Langford. Yep. Celtics uh, rookie. Elegance rookie jersey autographs. Number to 149. Um, so, um, yeah, he's... he's. Um, I feel like for a minute there was some excitement about him. Um, like maybe he had a fast start um, in the league. But at this point, yeah. No one's really buying his stuff. So um, move all these down. Um, so there's what you get for $1,000. Um, you know, and again, I'll talk about this in a later uh, video, but um, with these super high-end products that are like $1,000 for a small number of cards, your chance of getting your money back if you buy a single box is is very low. Uh, the The way to get your money back is to buy like a case of it and then, you know, you're probably if like th this came in, I think, three box cases. So you might get like two terrible boxes like this one. 
Um, and then, and by the way, this is, I don't mean to say this is like, it, this is like horrible. All these players are horrible. I just meant it's terrible in the sense of getting our money back on the, uh, on the box. It's definitely not, uh, even close, um, to getting the value unless I'm wrong about like that Dave Cowens, but I don't think I am. Um, so, you know, you're almost certain to get, um, well, okay, not almost certain, but you're you're much more likely to get your money back on a case than on a box because typically there's going to be like one of the boxes in the case that has a super crazy good card like, you know, a, um, Autograph Zion or something like that. Um, so you take your take your um, your chances with a single box, and that's what we've done here. And so I don't generally recommend people do that, um, especially because, you know, you can go and get a box like this, and this is maybe not the best example because I've heard people are having bad breaks of this stuff. But, you know, if you can get this for six, $700, at least you've got 150 cards in here. Um, and, um, you know, there's a fair number of parallels that you can get um, that are going to be valuable. I mean, there's like $1,000 Zions all over that thing, all over that product that aren't even autographed um, just because they're, you know, short numbered parallels. So, um and Panini Prism is another product that's, you know, it's $1,000 a box now. Um, there's whatever, you know, 100-some cards in there. And um, you're going to probably get a much better chance at making your money back than if you buy a super premium box like this and you're only getting nine cards. Um, and so I would recommend people, uh, you know, not do stuff like this if you're going to buy a box. But I wanted to do it. Now, if I'd gotten a really good card in here that was worth like, you know, $1,500, um, uh, then my point would have been a little bit harder to understand, but, uh, that did not happen. And I did not think that would happen. So point made. All right. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed, um, certainly let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions on things you'd like me to cover in future shows. Um, uh, again, this is, I just want to kind of get one out the door here, get a, a video out the door and I'm going to be working on lots of stuff, um, setting up a website, you know, finding ways to get, do contests, um, for folks who are watching the, the, the channel, um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, just exploring lots of topics that, uh, people might find interesting if they're getting into sports cards, um, or have been in the sports cards industry for a while and just want to kind of. Um, here's some ideas on, uh, on things they might be thinking about. So thanks everybody for watching. We'll catch y'all later. Have a great one. Bye now.